Hey folks, welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Awakening truthers need to wake up and realize that there's no one coming to your help. There's no one coming to your aid. The government agencies are all in bed with a much higher order, way above the Rothschilds and way above the Rockefellers. We need to take the game up a notch. That's what we're going to do here. FEMA and the Red Cross to continue to build partnerships. We're getting evidence that FEMA has buying is buying property in Chico, the neighborhood town, to uh, Paradise. Um, <clears throat> and we can see here from this article, thanks to uh, the great researcher, really quality researcher, Anthony Haywood. You can find him on Facebook. I would just highly encourage you all to get Anthony Haywood on your Facebook. He's just updating. He's on it. Guy's a rock star. Anyway, FEMA and the Red Cross. Now, you remember when uh, the disasters, Hurricane Harvey, Puerto Rico, all the rest of these came? Where was the Red Cross? Well, the Red Cross was there to get, uh, you know, your, your money from Safeway. The Red Cross was there every time you, you got to the store to buy something. Would you help and donate to the victims of hurricane relief in Puerto Rico and Hurricane Harvey and all these other places? The Red Cross was there to help. The Red Cross was there to help. Guess what we're not seeing? Guess what? Donate here. See, you had the donate button, Safeway, Albertsons, Salvation Army. You know, you see all these over here, this. We're not seeing that now, folks. There's no Red Cross coming to help. There's no stations. There's nobody there to help the victims of tens of thousands who are scattered from paradise. There is no one but us. We've raised over $10,000. We're helping this family get an RV. We're having others contact us. We're, we have PayPal. We have other donations set up one-to-one. -one. We're going up there with uh, wonderful spirits like Valerie Jager and uh, supposedly Shelly who are doing just the yeoman's work to connect and to reconnect with our fellow tribe members who have but lost everything. But there's no Red Cross. There's no FEMA to be found. And, uh, you know, let's get real, folks. Red Cross, Red Shield, Rothschild's Red Shield, Rothschild Shield, Red Cross, British Cross on the flag, Red Cross, Knights of Malta, we've been double crossed. President and CEO of American Red Cross takes in almost three quarters of a million dollars plus expenses. Look at that smug little face. Nine cents of every dollar donates. Goodwill for profit. Salvation Army for profit. They take the salaries huge and then they say, oh, we're helping people under the guise of nonprofit. It's all bullshit. And we'll flesh this out more a little about what buildings were standing and whatnot after the uh, paradise was demolished. Everything was demolished except for the hospital, except for the gas uh, hookups. The gas station was gone, but the hookups were fine. And the Freemason Masonic Lodge is one of the few buildings left standing in paradise. What a coincidental, another just huge coincidence of the worst kind. And uh, as you'll see from the uh, clips coming up here, um, FEMA is admitting there was nanoparticulate matter used uh, found in the soils of some of the fire uh, areas they, they uh, lo looked at. Uh, and also you'll hear about the... Uh, American Red Cross is basically owned by the men in black, the Jesuits, who we've been calling out now for a while as being behind it all. But if you can, if you can, if you can, if you want, we're directly helping and contributing to those who've lost everything. If you can, if you want to wish to donate, please donate to one of these addresses here, and we'll make sure that they get the money. Nothing's being taken out whatsoever. We're just trying to do our own help where we can with who we have with what we have what, what, what we got anyway let's get into it more about FEMA and um, love one another folks we need to come together we need to find our tribes we need to reach out a lot of people are going to be having to deal with a lot of darkness that's going to be lasting a very long time and we need to help our fellow brothers and sisters peace all right we're here on Jesuit.org I'm going to show you another connection that these very wicked people have uh, with a something that a lot of people would think is a good charity. We're going to start out here by going to Jesuits Worldwide. Click on this link. Then down here, the second paragraph, Jeff, Jesuit Refugee Service. We'll click there. It takes you to this website here. And we're going to go the whole way to the bottom of this page to Links. Okay. When we click on that, we're going to look at a couple things here. First, you have Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. Hmm. The Jesuits being involved with the United Nations. 
Oh, sure. Absolutely. How about the International Bureau of Education? Hmm. Jesuits being involved in education? Yeah. That's why a lot of times when you go to a public school, you'll be taught all about the evil Nazis, but you'll never be taught about the fact that they were financed and controlled basically by Catholicism. And most of the high-level Nazis were Catholics. You know, the Jesuits have a hand in your education. But look at this one. International Committee of the Red Cross. Hmm, how about that one? Let's click on that link. Okay, you say, well, this is probably just over in, in Italy or something like that. Well, uh, let's go to where we work. The Americas. All right, down here other, under other operations, let's click on this link. The ICRC, International Committee of the Red Cross in North America. Okay, read full overview. That's just a that little bit there. But it says here, the Washington Regional Delegation covers the United States and Canada, promoting IHL, facilitating ICRC operations worldwide through its contacts and visiting people in Guantanamo. They're a good place for the uh, Office of Inquisition to be where you can torture people. Just foreigners right now, you know. Of course, they don't have any plans to torture Christians in America or anything like that. You know, don't, don't believe in conspiracies like that now. But it says, uh, it raises awareness of the ICRC's mandate, mobilizes support, facilitates IHL implementation, and works closely with the American and Canadian Red Cross societies. So you say, well, I want to do something good for my community, good for my local area, by going down to the local um, blood drive or whatever, the, the thing where you give blood, you know, with the Red Cross. Uh, you're not doing good. You're actually supporting a Jesuit organization. You know, and I'm not going to read all this here. You can read that if you want to. But look at this over here. Related pages. Arms Trade Treaty, a humanitarian imperative. Hmm. Arms Trade Treaty. Talking about a video there. Arms Trade Treaty. Arms and ammunition are not just another form of commercial goods. So in other words, I mean, look at the look at the subtle thing here with this. You know, it's not just something that you have a right to have. You know, it's it's something that maybe we ought to look at controlling. You know. Isn't that something? And that's, you know, the Jesuits linked to this organization. And you say, well, Brian, I don't think that they have anything to do with, you know, the Catholics and a Red Cross. I don't think that the Catholics ever had anything to do with the Red Cross. Well, how about you go to Google Images and type in the word Crusaders? You know, the uh, Roman Catholic Crusaders of the past? Going out and fighting the wars, the physical wars for the Pope. They wore white and a red cross was their symbol. Interesting how you would have the ICRC connected to the Jesuits. Hmm. So if you do a search for the Tubbs Fire on the FEMA website, you get almost zero result. There are no images, no articles, no references. I found that to be a little bit odd, given the scale of the operation there. Uh, I guess it's still under investigation, but no images. Uh, except for this one mention in a summary of 2017. You can see where it's mentioned on the bottom of this segment here. But, I don't know. But, here is uh, what's really quite interesting. Car engines melted into rivers of alloy metal. Let's read along the caption at the bottom of this picture. Recent catastrophic wildfires ripped through the area, engulfing cars and everything in the path. The fire temperature, exacerbated by nanometals, burns hotter than organic materials, which can reach high temperatures, nice typo, able to melt engine blocks and alloy wheels into streams of molten metal. Where do they come up with this? They don't even take the time to proofread. And what what is nanometals exacerbating a fire temperature? Can that be demonstrated in a laboratory? And even observed to some extent in the natural environment? I don't know. This is weird. Here's another one. Different caption, pretty much the same idea. The fire temperatures exacerbated by nanometals 
burn hotter, which can melt the engine blocks and alloy rims of modern-day machinery. Adam Dubrois. FEMA. So this is not NBC making up fake news to distract the population. This is the government making some bizarre speculative statements to fill in the blank. What is it trying to do? Exacerbating conspiracy theories, perhaps?